interesting scenario. The, the coin has been tossed and smearing has the white pieces. And amazingly enough, Danny, this is the repetition of what happened in Moscow. The players were even after the first two games. And now again, Smirin has the white pieces as he did then, Anand the black pieces, but if Anand draws the game, he wins the match. That's right, but Smirin has a time advantage, has a one minute time advantage to compensate for that. So, it's all down to this game. Smirin opens with his favorite E4 move, and Anand playing symmetrically for the moment. Smirin lashing out with his pawn. So this is a typical opening that Anand uses. He's, he's used it in many big time competitions. He's won a lot of games with it. And now, just playing quickly, all he needs to do is draw and he'll move on to the next round. Kasparov awaits the winner. So that's a slight surprise. Anand thinking about this move. Slightly unusual. Now, what's he going to play? I've never seen Anand so uncertain. It's incredible. He's spending a lot of time on his clock, and you have to remember that he's spotting Smirin a minute, and for him to be thinking this deeply, and it's only like the fourth, the fourth move on the board. It's incredible. Smirin playing very cleverly here. Now, what's he going to do? Not thinking. I think this is unbelievable. He's almost spent a minute, a minute, 20% of his time for four moves. It's incredible, the uncertainty of this strong player. He clearly is a bit off form. He better get back in form or he's going to be out of this competition. He's under four minutes now. It's crazy. What Come on. <laughs> Come on, Vishy. Make a move. Make a move. Madness. Come on. This is this is unbelievable. This this is shocking. I, I'm stunned to see it. He's thinking this long on, on, on this, the fourth move of the chess game, analyzing what I do not know. But Smearin has successfully thrown him off, and now he's used a minute and 30 seconds to think about four moves. This is completely ridiculous. He's putting himself into a deep, deep hole. Yeah, I mean, this, this simple recapture of the pawn by White is a little bit unusual. Normally you attack this knight first. Having said that, the position is fairly simple. What is Vichy doing? He's finally made a move. I mean, could it, could it have been that dramatic? I do not know what he was thinking about, but it's certainly surprising. He spent all that time and finally he's chased the knight. Although, although he's renowned to be an incredible speed player, we've seen him uncertain in this match. He, he needs to get his form back, and he's lost a lot of time in the clock, and he needs to start whipping out some moves. And finally, he's pushed his pawn up, and now he's beginning to play a little bit quicker. The bishop attacking, and now his knight has come out into the game, and now he's speeding up. The king is castled. So this is a fairly well-known position, um, but Anand has used almost two minutes to get there. I, I just don't, don't know what he was doing. So the, he's played this way before. This is a known theoretical position. So Anand knows it very well, but he's... He's moving, he's used a lot of time on his clock, he's used a lot of time, and, and now he's under three minutes, and Smirin has not even used one minute. He's not even used 60 seconds on his clock, and Anand already used about two, and two minutes, 15 seconds. So the time could be a crucial factor here. Anand's position is fine, very solid, reasonable. He has great experience with this opening. But he's down on time. He's exchanging <laughs> off pieces now. His knight has to drop back, and he's dropped back to the center. The knight kicking at this bishop. So let's let's suppose he wants to save that bishop. Well, then he'll have to drop it back one square. He doesn't want to do that. He's left S it alone. Smirin increasing the pressure. Now, this knight is stopping this attack down towards the king. The queen and bishop in a very threatening battery down here. So the pawn has come up. He's taken. Oh, this is fantastic. He's taking this pawn. He's sacrificing a piece. And now, Smirin has collected another pawn. It seems as if he thought he was going to win this knight, but Anand has defended it quite simply with this bishop move, and maybe Smirin is going to be down a piece. Okay, but Smirin has two pawns for this piece, and he's, he's now got a third. So he has three pawns for the piece. That's compensation itself. I can't help but think, though, that Anand up a piece is a lot more confident. He's starting to move like his old self. He's gotten the challenge, and he's going to try to meet it, moving much quicker, moving his king now of that dangerous 
deadly diagonal. He's put it in the corner, hiding it, and he has a piece. But as you said, Danny, three pawns for it is what White has. Yeah, but I mean, I would still prefer I would prefer White's position here, definitely. And at least Anand has something to go for now. It's fairly clear where his chances lie. So he's down on time, but he's got something to play for now. He's whipping off moves. There's suddenly a pause in the situation. Look at Smirin's bishop. Despite being a piece down, he has some healthy bishops sitting in the middle of the board, and he's attacking a pawn, and Anand has ignored it. This is why they call this a shootout. Both sides' guns come out blazing and now making sure that no attack happens and Anand has sacrificed the bishop in the middle but of course he would gain that queen and he sacrificed his his rook for the bishop and now he's attacking he's attacking a rook and a queen this is fantastic battle going on so here the reason he's done that is to trade off pieces there you go he's just trading more pieces off the board and it seems he's about to win not just one pawn but two he's ripping a rook no, in fact, he's only going to win one pawn, and he's up a piece. And, Danny, this is like a quick turnaround, and Anand is just up a piece. Okay, he's up a piece, but uh, he's oh, taking a pawn. Fantastic. And he sacrificed his queen. If Unbelievable pawn... sacrifice. Anand showing his form. So, at the start of this, Smirin had three pawns for the piece. Now he's only got one. Vichy has a clearly winning position here. Oh. The only problem is time. He has about a minute and a half to try and win this game. Smirin has over three minutes. And look at Anand display his skill, his accuracy, and his moves moving quickly, showing just why they consider him so fast and so rich a speed player. He's just moving quickly now. He's had a big disadvantage on the clock, but he's got an extra piece. But this, this is not over yet. This game is not over. Anand has only a minute and a half to try and win this game. Oh, but look at that position. The piece is all, oh, and he thumped that rope down with authority, and bam, he's ripped off all the extra points. He's just got a pass point, and look at him make a minute look like a year. He's ripped another point off the board. Anand, seemingly coming back in.